What does a recently widowed old woman do to escape the mafia who have come to recover something that she originally took from them? Hello, and welcome to the channel. Today I'm gonna show you an American dark humor movie based in Chinatown called Lucky Grandma. Let's check it out. The movie opens at the house of a fortune teller. She can tell that her visitor lost someone close to her in recent times. It was her husband. She also reads out the possible things that her visitor, Grandma Wong, would experience shortly. In her consultations, she sees that something great is about to happen to Wong, and her voice carries some levels of excitement. Wong, who, by the way, has no respect for health warnings about smoking, puffs her cigarette as she asks the fortune teller if this great thing about to happen to her will be good or bad luck. The fortune teller says it's definitely a season of reward for her, and so it's quite safe to say that Wong should expect goodies. The fortune teller even tells her the date of her unexpected luck, the 28th of October. The next scene shows that it's Grandma Wong's birthday, and as her family sings her a happy birthday, she looks uninterested. For a woman who has seen many birthdays, a cake with candles is not necessarily something that makes her excited anymore. As she does the dishes in the kitchen, her son asks that she moves in with them, but Grandma says she likes her place. He tells her that staying alone would incur more costs, and it's not really a good idea since she would be alone. However, Grandma insists that she'll be paying for the accommodations with her retirement money. One day, as she wakes up, she looks at the calendar in her room and discovers that it's the 28th day of October, her lucky day. She goes to the bank, and as she speaks with the cashier, the bank manager and some staff come out to sing for her being one of their lucky customers as part of their 10th anniversary. Being the 88th customer for that day, she wins 10 bags of rice. However, 10 bags of rice is not going to sway her from achieving what the day has for her. She tells the bank cashier to withdraw all of her savings from her account. She's definitely got great plans for this money. After leaving the bank, she gets on a bus that's heading for a casino. As she arrives at the casino, she appears confident that the day certainly has her name written on it. She pushes past some of the people as she makes her way to the gambling table. Make room for the next millionaire. She begins to place her bets, calling eight for the first bet. And she wins. And then she does it again and wins and stakes everything. A man at the table cautions her, but she ignores him. The good thing is, she wins again. She continues to have winning streaks and continues to increase her stakes. What's to stop her from doing so? I mean, after all, today is her lucky day. As she puffs at her cigarette, she confidently places yet another big bet. Unfortunately, the luck vehicle must have run out of gas at this time and she loses this all too important bet. She's shocked as she begins to realize the foolishness of her decisions. Driven by fear, greed, or some other vices, we can make some of our greatest mistakes. Grandma's overconfidence based on the recommendations of her fortune teller proved to be a mistake. And in most of the things that life offers us, it's never a good idea to make potentially life-altering decisions based on our emotions. Grandma Wong, who's now humbled by the event, gets on a bus to return to her life of enhanced poverty. A man comes into the bus and places his luggage above her before making his way to sit beside her. As the journey progresses, she notices that the man whose eyes are closed keeps putting his head on her shoulder no matter how many times she pushes him away. She eventually puts her finger close to his nose and discovers that he's no longer breathing. Almost immediately, the bus swerves and the man's bag falls by grandma's feet. She opens the bag and sees a lot of money inside. She also sees a tattoo on his neck, signifying that he belongs to a certain gang, but this would not deter grandma. Her lucky streak is back, and she takes the bag of money after asking that he rests in peace. With so much money at her disposal, she goes on a little shopping spree. As she gets back home, she meets two strange men in her apartment, Little Handsome and his partner. By the way, there is nothing little or exactly handsome about him. It's probably a name that used to be true a long time ago. They are members of the Red Dragon Gang. They ask about her trip back home and if she saw her seatmate with a bag. Grandma Wong lies about paying attention to the dead man. After subtly threatening her, they leave her house but continue to follow her around. Grandma Wong goes in search of protection from the Zhonglang Gang and ends up with a big guy, Big Pong. He is a huge and simple looking bodyguard who takes his job pretty seriously. One day, as Grandma goes to get her hair done, she asks Big Pong to get her a tea. When he leaves, Little Handsome and his partner come into the salon and demand the money she took. She denies having any of the money and they begin to harass her. Luckily, Big Pong appears and protects her from them. 
He asks if she has anything to do with the Red Dragon gang, but she insists that she's innocent. Later on, she goes to meet a man for advice. The man is aware of the incident on the bus, and he tells her that the man on the bus was the accountant for the Zhang Lang gang. However, rumors say that he was also a member of the Red Dragons. When she asks how he knows about the Zhang Lang gang, he tells her that he knows about a certain sister, Fong, a no-nonsense member of the gang that no one in their right senses should ever cross. One day after having a light conversation with Big Pong, Grandma Wong goes to the bathroom and Big Pong's phone rings. The network in the room is poor, so he goes outside to take the call. However, Little Handsome and his partner attack him. After punching him, they come into the house House and begin to seriously search for the bag of money. They scatter the place and turn it over in their search. Grandma Wong overhears the noise, and when she sees it's her attacker, she goes to fight with them with a saucepan. After knocking Little Handsome on the head, his partner attacks her and begins to beat her. Big Pong enters the house just in time and punches the assailant. As he falls to the ground, he hits his head on the edge of the table and loses his life. Big Pong is paralyzed with fear and unable to move when he discovers that he just took the man's life. Grandma Wong gets a trash bag and together they do their best to dispose of the body. Big Pong is really worried and wants them to tell Sister Fong. He believes that she would eventually find out about what happened and so they ought to be prepared for any confrontation with the Red Dragons. The journey to crime often begins with seemingly innocent things. It could be a white lie or something usually considered small. Unfortunately, it has a way of growing bigger and more dangerous in most cases. The movie begins to take quite a bizarre turn at this point. It seems to be revving up for more uncertainties. No more clumsy gangsters and an old woman who seems to be getting ahead in her newly found crime career. Big Pong is visibly shaken by this incident and loses his composure. One day, as Grandma Wong goes to the spa that she regularly visits, Fong visits her. From the conversation, it's obvious that Fong knows that Grandma is not being honest about the money she took. Fong increases the temperature in the steam room in the spa, and Grandma Wong faints because of the heat. When she wakes up, she's set to leave, but sees that Fong's personal driver is there to take her home. When she asks after Big Pong, she's told that he is sick and had to leave. Of course, the old budding criminal doesn't believe him and escapes. Unfortunately, she runs into Little Handsome and other gang members and they begin to pursue her. Fong's driver finds her, and after seeing the gang pursuing her, he takes her into a shop and gunfire ensues. At the end of it, Fong's driver and almost all the Red Dragon members are either lifeless or critically injured. Grandma Wong is also bleeding from a gunshot during the shootout. She manages to get home and sees a note from the Red Dragons, asking her to bring the money in exchange for David, her grandson. She begins to put the money together when Big Pong enters her house. When he sees the money, he's upset with her for taking the money belonging to Zhang Lang and seizes the money from her without the thought of returning it to Fong. Grandma Wong's pain is revealed as she states how her late husband left her with nothing after decades of working. Painful to say the least, but still not a reason to go into crime, right? This right here is a sad feeling. That her entire life has been a fraud. That's quite a difficult thing to deal with. How do you give your best to a nation or employer, and at the end of your productive years, you're left with peanuts in the name of a pension? Grandma must have been disappointed in her husband, who was just a victim of a system that he also had no control over. That night, she takes a bag to the Red Dragon Group in exchange for her grandson. When they open the bag, they find it full of trash. Okay, Granny, what are you up to this time? Do you understand the gravity of this prank you're about to pull? The head of the Red Dragons does not find this funny, but Grandma begs him to allow her to serve them for the rest of her life. This is not what the Red Dragons want. Who chooses an old and almost lifeless employee over thousands of dollars? The Zhang Lang gang saves the situation when they begin to shoot. They take out a significant number of the Red Dragons. Little Handsome grabs David amidst the shootings and makes to escape. This act always makes you wonder why people do that in critical situations. Why do they always grab someone instead of traveling light and just running for their lives? Grandma sees David being taken and runs towards him. She's hit by a bullet, and David finally realizes he has teeth sharp enough to bite. He bites Little Handsome and runs towards his grandma. Big Pong also comes to her and carries her out of the dangerous situation. Fortunately, Grandma survives. She is definitely one tough lady to beat. As she goes to her son's house to celebrate David's birthday, he appears unhappy with her. No little boy should have to go through that kind of trauma because of an old woman's desire for quick money, right? As the movie ends, 
Grandma decides to stay with her son and his family. Lucky Grandma makes us realize that we all actually have that one person in our family who has all the elements of badass, rebellious personal style and cutting edge concern for family members living or deceased. And in the case of this movie, it's Granny. Let us know what you love about your grandmother in the comments down below. This movie is an interesting watch as it comically shows that crime can be carried out even by the elderly. However, it also exposes the pain of slaving and working diligently for so long only to end up with nothing. While it's easy to advise everyone to be aware of crime, the questions about what happens to those who give their all in service to their nation should be deeply looked into. Overall, it's a funny movie with great lessons if you pay attention to the lessons behind the fun. Please subscribe to our channel to be notified when we upload. Also, don't forget to suggest movies that you want us to recap in the future in the comments down below.